This is the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa time for us to look at the front pages of a national daily. So we call it off the press right here on the breakfast. Uh, we have Chris Kane Wandu who joins the conversation this morning. Chris, many thanks for being with us. Frank <laughs> I know Kofi put that wow, right man. in your mouth, yeah, you, but thanks you, you, for being yeah. with us. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, showing that you actually detribalized Nigeria. Exactly. Yes. So, so we'll, have, we'll add in, in, in another name to your name, Chris Kende Muhammadu Wandu. How about that? <laughs> Kofi, we need to get straight to the crux of the matter. We're out of time. Uh, we'll start off with the leadership, Chris. Uh, the interesting conversations across the pages this morning. And the first on the leadership, it talks about uh, the 2023 campaigns begins in 2023 days. Nigeria is sick competence above party and religious ethnic concentration. Uh, I think that there might just be, you know, a mix up with that paper. So uh, as I take uh, the nation newspaper now. On the nation newspaper, PDP crisis, I will crush my detractors, says Wike. It is too late to break my ranks. Atiko already sharing position before the polls, says Rivers Governors or governor. Worst of insecurity is over, federal government tells Nigerians. I mean, it feels like we've been hearing that for a very long time. 3,407 insurgents surrendered, 96 arrested by troops. Abuja Kaduna Highway now safe, 63 or 66 terrorists killed. Anti-terror war to be intensified, 52 captives rescued. Petrol scarcity looms as Ip man stops supply. It's going to be a big trouble for us. How Lagos vision, or how Tunibu's vision turned Lagos into a mega city. Mm. Well, it's not a conversation we're ready for. Elizabeth Truss is British Prime Minister. Collapse building, Lagos Commissioner resigns. And federal government suspends 5% tax on telecom services. The headlines this morning on The Nation. Right, moving on from the nation, let's go to the next paper, there, the Punch newspaper with some interesting headlines uh, for us this morning. The big one, Muslim Muslim ticket, the headline says, no agreement with Tinubu, can insist, talks tough, talks tough. And uh, the writers to that, donation to Kuka Center, not bribe to pacify Christians, says Khan. <laughs> donation to Kuka Center, not bribe to pacify Christians says can can's conscience not for sale prophetic voice cannot be silenced christian body and pdp jittery over tinbo's visit to jonathan it's according to the apc is what they're saying onanuga promises issue-based campaigns we wish him the best more from the punch discos fail to utilize 1936 megawatts amidst blackouts is according to the federal government. So what is happening to that? It's just going to waste. FG suspends 5% telecoms tax on calls and data. All right, I think uh, Pantami is having his way. Flooding killed 372 persons in eight months. This is coming from the Nigerian Emergency Management Authority or agency. A really sad statistic there. 11 state varsities, Sean Asu, FG, threatens unions. 11 state varsities, Sean Asu, FG, threatens unions. More from the punch. BPE raises panel to revive dying government-owned companies. Okay, it's uh, how many months to the end of the tenure of this administration. And uh, earthquake kills over 40, destroys homes in China. A final few stories from the punch this morning. Fraud, EFCC, arraigns Ogun Speaker, assemblies, Assembles rather 10 witnesses. Four more building collapse corpses recovered. Commissioner uh, resigns and 5,307 kidnap robbery suspects arrested in two months. So some sad stories right there. But those are the headlines on the front page of the punch. And quickly, we'll just run through the day trust newspaper. We'll eliminate all terrorists by December. That's what the federal government is saying. Really, really. Because uh, how many more months after, I mean, in December, were just how many more months before uh, the tenure of this administration comes to an end, led by President Muhammad Buhari? It says, worst of insecurity is over. What we cannot achieve in seven plus, uh, we're going to achieve in how many months? 
counterinsurgency, not fair fight. Defense Minister is saying, wow, economic reforms must support military offensive. That's what security experts are quoted to say. And just before we move away from the Daily Trust newspaper, death toll now 372 as floating spreads to 33 states, FCT, including the FCT. So we're looking at 34 now. Please bust or go in baby factory where men are hired to impregnate girls. So a lot is going on. Kujie prison security breach despite 65 well-armed personnel deployed. That's what the minister is saying. And Buhari suspends new excess duty telecoms tariff hike. Boko Haram runs short of food and weapons as food as flood takes over uh, enclaves. And Lagos commissioner resigns as building collapse. That toll hit six. Some people say this is political. Uh, but we see how all of this unfolds. A motion returns to winning ways, uh, strikes gold in Berlin. And that's it on the Daily Trust newspaper. The final paper on our table this morning happens to be The Guardian. We have a big one uh, from that paper focusing on the crisis in the PDP. The headline, Wiki accuses Atiko Koa, are you of sharing positions ahead of 2023? Indeed, uh, he has been in Abia State uh, commissioning a flyover, believe it or not, um, built by Governor Ekpazo. For those who are saying Ekpazo is doing nothing, um, that's one for you. He's sticking it up to you right there. But uh, uh, Wiki had a new song, I think about one new song to sing. And uh, the, the band in Abia State, uh, Ekpazo came with a band for him. So they did the Abia version of uh, our city suite as he could paint them. I, I would say the Araria version. It was quite interesting to see. He had a dance or two also to give. Um, and Wiki is basking in, in, in the euphoria of the attention he's receiving. More from The Guardian. Oil industry, FG, to install new flow meters. Uh, take over production fr production data from oil firms. Okay. Uh, trust becomes third female UK prime minister. That's talking about Liz Trust. Uh, we have uh, Petros Kesti looms as uh, Ipman announces warning strike over bridging claims. Buhari suspends proposed excise duty on telecom sector. Uh, banks review working hours over security concerns. We already had, they also were reviewing that over uh, diesel issues or cost of operation. And trial of parents, guardians, out of school children begins September 12, says Obaski. Trial of parents, guardians of out of school children begins September 12, says Obaski. Uh, interesting one right there. And we bring it at this point. Um, uh, of course, Chris, Chris Kenley wanted to uh, give us uh, his take on what the papers are saying this morning. So, uh, Chris, let, let's start with the um, the the part the nation. It also echoes what uh, the Guardian is saying, giving space and attention to the crisis in the People's Democratic Party. We can say he'll crush his detractors, and also saying uh, that Atiku Okoa and Ayu are sharing positions ahead of 2023. What are your thoughts on this as captured in the Nation newspaper and also the Guardian newspaper? Yeah, Kofi, um, let me be, bring you up to speed on the remix, that song remix of Nuike. Uh, what he said was, Onye nenye mukam nenye. Onye nenye mukam ganye. So what he's saying is that it's just a remix uh, that whoever gives me is who I'm going to give. So. It's no longer as they sweet them, they paint them. It's not now who give me and I have to give. That was his dance. That was the remiss of that song. And it's high time that uh, we, um, uh, Governor Wilke should be nominated for Hedges next year. Uh, he has so many songs now. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> he has so many songs now that can win him either as a new entrant uh, the one that uh, portable, you know, the one that portable missed, uh, that was shouting all over the place that uh, the person that won uh, had no uh, his song. I think uh, Governor Wicke would make a very good uh, uh, artist. So they probably should uh, have uh, an uh, award for the best singing governor. Yeah, the best singing governor. They should, they should create a, a category for that uh, so that we can all go to Atlanta next year too to, <laughs> to help him give him that award. Yeah, but on a more serious note, um, what is happening is the PDP uh, is nothing new. It's just that um, the gladiator since the beginning, and uh, there seems to be no uh, truth uh, uh, insights 
and um, the neck of um, of um, PDP will be meeting. Make, uh, meeting uh, will be having a meeting, a make or man meeting in the next 48 hours. That in itself will determine whether Ayu will remain as the chairman, national chairman of PDP, or whether he will go. Uh, but the article come from what I'm also reading. I dig in and saying that uh, um, Ayu is going nowhere. But the problem is that Nigerians are. Uh, are not good students of history, especially our politicians. Let me just give you a brief. In, 20, in 1999, the Southwest did not vote for um, uh, Olusegun Obasanjo, and he won the general election. In 2003, uh, uh, yes, the Southwest okay felt that oh, this is our our person. This is a man from our side. Let us now. The vote for um, uh, um, Olusha Gombasan. So the Southwest governors, uh, who, were, who were mostly in the 80 then, decided one thing to vote for Olusha Gombasan as president, then vote 80 governors as uh, as governors. You knew what happened. At the end of it all, that boomerang and PDP won all the states in the Southwest, except for Lagos. Uh, that was when uh, Ashwa Joe Bola had made Tunubu uh, uh, was governor. So that attempt boomerang. So if any of these people going around as, oh, we are going to get another candidate, they will vote for the president, under president, and put somebody uh, as governor in our state. It has a way of boomerang. Second one, in 2015, some governors, some people left from the N NPDP in order to join a, the newly formed uh, uh, APC then. Kofi, Messi, ask yourself today, where are those people? All those people that left PDP are going to join a a APC. Today, they are nowhere to be found. People like Sarake and the rest of them. So many of the governors from PDP did that. So what I'm saying, in essence, is that our leaders should be very, very careful. The governors of these governors of PDP should be very careful. And the ones I'm even pitting most is Mackinde. Because Mackinde is the only governor among those four governors that are moving around that has a second term. Autumn is not coming back, uh, Mike is not coming back, Ipazu is not coming back. It was the best case, case scenario that moving to the Senate. But Maki has a second term. And APC is very strong in in uh, in Oyo State. So if it is like I just be junketing and following Mike and try to destroy PDP, a party he himself is going to be a candidate in 2023, then is uh, making a big mistake. But let's wait how this pans out in the next few days and see what the uh, a PDP uh, neck we come at whether are you will remain or go. All right, uh, Chris, let's take a look at the Daily Trust newspaper. Let, let's, you know, go back, you know, to the Bible. You remember the story where I know that you're a Christian and so you probably remember uh, the encounter where the angel said to Mary that she was going to have a son. And she said, how can this thing be? when the, she's a virgin and she has no husband. Uh, on the daily trust, the federal government is saying that insecurity would actually, he will eliminate, let's read it the way it is. Uh, I like how the daily trust caption said, will eliminate all terrorists by December. That's what the federal government is quoted to say. And my question is, how can this thing be? Uh, you know, the federal government is always setting targets. Um, I remember when the former chief of army staff, Rata, came, became chief of army staff. He gave, uh, he said within three months that uh, or so there about that uh, they're going to eliminate uh, Boko Haram and the rest of them. And until he left, he couldn't do that. Um, I also remember that when this government came into place, the Minister of Information, uh, Lemon, told us that what is now happening now is the last kick of a dying horse. That horse is still jumping around. In fact, you find that horse at the back pitch, uh, moving up and down. So, it's, uh, so our leaders have been really, really trying to set unnecessary target for themselves. But the good news for me is that that's uh, any doubt. I'll give it to this guy. At least in the last few weeks, we've seen some uh, high level of. Uh, uh, they are taking the, the military are taking the fight to the to the terrorists, and they've uh, recorded so many successes, uh, especially in the north. And Kofi, unless you can agree with me that the attack has not been as as fast as, as it used to be. Um, just here, a little attack here and there now. And even at that, the the, the military seems to be using the uh, the new 
military aircraft that they that was acquired, especially to Kano's effective use. But my worry is that a few days ago, the chief of uh, naval um, chief of air staff came out to say that they are having issues with using the uh, um, 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 airplanes on air force planes. Why? Because they are also running uh, short of aviation fuel. You know the problem within the aviation industry where the commercial um, operators are already crying uh, that they are not having enough aviation fuel. That even the one that getting that is so expensive. The chief of air staff is also crying at that. This may affect the success so far being recorded, especially in the fight against uh, insurgency. So I hope that the federal government will be needful. But for anybody to tell us that um, they will eliminate insurgency by, 20, uh, by December this year, it's a total miracle. Even the greatest of countries, United States of America, Russia, and the rest of them have not said that they totally eliminated terrorism and the rest of them. Um, so but let them keep their eyes on the board. Forget about giving all these unnecessary targets. When it comes and we, with Nigerians, we know. You don't need to tell us. When the insurgency has been brought to a, a, a stop, Nigerians, we know. Just three days ago, close to about 30 uh, or uh, 20 people were uh, kidnapped in somewhere in Ontario State uh, while they were coming from a wedding. That is also part of um, terrorism and the rest of them. So, uh, but let them keep on doing what they do and uh, let's get it done. But setting unnecessary target is not for me because at the end of it all, if you don't be able to meet that target, then I just will see you as a total failure. Why don't you just keep fighting and do the job that's supposed to be? Interesting. Let's move on to the Punch newspaper, Chris Kendall. Um, uh, the, the picture uh, right there, you know, a picture story on the front page is uh, one that leaves, uh, makes the, term, the tummy turn. Um, I mean, I, I, I covered the the Port Harcourt building collapse, uh, it was quite gory. The Goshen's have had a very, very tough deal, a very bad deal, as far as building collapse are concerned. Um, in, in, in Lagos State, uh, the Commissioner for, for um, uh, uh, Urban Development and Fiscal Planning, for want of a better word, I've not defined it well, um, he's had his work cut out. Uh, the, the latest is, of course, they say formal building collapse, corpses, corpses have been recovered, and the Commissioner has resigned. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Let's start with the entire building collapse and the fact that more bodies are being recovered, and then you speak about the uh, resignation of the commissioner. That is a collapse to many, and this is not the first time. It happened over and over in Lagos. And we said the problem is that nobody is being brought to book to account for uh, for this um, collapse. And um, investigation, uh, I'm a journalist, uh, investigation carried out, showed that 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 particular building had been seen several times and it was reopened by the contractor and the government closed, had a, closed their eyes to it and we even learned that the guy was always posting that he has people uh, above or whatever and that is why so you can see that for me the the resignation of the commissioner is political to me it's just political it's just uh, they are, it's not trying to go he supposed that commissioner, if he was involved, should be prosecuted because that means he has not been doing his job. If he's sitting in his office and such is happening, what did he do about it? Not only the commission. Don't forget that sometime ago, the general manager, general, general manager of the Bureau of Torture, one of the authorities, was also suspended. I, I hope remember during the last collapse that the general manager was suspended. I don't know whether he had been suspended. Or not. But, I've always yeah, said but, the time with that number. That, but, but, but Chris, is, is it possible? Sorry to interrupt, member. Is it possible? That a commissioner would know about every single application for every single building that is made in Lagos State, a city that is the most populous on the continent. Why are you blaming Burari for this? No, 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 no. I'm talking about maybe no, 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 you, no, you, no, you have no. officials in the no. in the in the agency. You have um. Uh, so, Kofi, so why are you blaming Nigeria? Why are you blaming Burari? the problem of Nigeria? Economic, social, uh, insecurity. This is not the president of Nigeria. Why are you only blaming him? Why don't you just be blaming ministers? When you are giving their responsibilities, everything falls on you. As far as this, as far as Plus TV is concerned, if anything happens here in Plus TV, you as a staff may not be held responsible. The managing director of Plus TV will be held responsibility. That is what is called responsibility. So that is why he is the CEO of this TV station. So if NBC come. Kofi, you will probably not be picked for saying anything. It's the end that will be picked. So the same thing goes around. So once I give you the responsibility, you are supposed to get the right, whether he's there or not there. I'm telling you now that there have been reports that that place has been sealed and unsealed. Who's sealed and unsealed? 
the, go, the commissioner, he has, he has his permanent secretary, he has those under him, controllers, and the rest of them, who are supposed to be reporting to him. That is why he's the commissioner of uh, planning and urban planning, or whatever you call it. But that is neither here for, here for me. I've only said it that most of this issue we have is because the, those in the ministry are always going with these contractors. They go, they bribe them, and they just keep them in this river. What of the impact assessment that's supposed to be done on that building? We saw what happened with the, uh, with the one in the Puyi that collapsed where a building was made for about 17 plus and somebody took it to 21. And there were people in government who could, didn't do anything about it until that building collapsed and killed several people, including the, uh, the owner of the building. So um, they, they, they must have done the difficult, but I still feel that until we start holding those in charge accountable and make sure that they are prosecuted. We will continue to have this kind of problem. All right, so he, he, the, he, uh, commissioner yes. resigning is not enough for me. Yeah, he is the commissioner for fiscal planning and urban development, uh, Idris Salako. Yeah. Well, let, let, let's quickly yeah. let's quickly uh, take a look at the Punch newspaper. Uh, the, the top corner of it talks about eleven state universities shrunning ASU, and the federal government threatens the union. We we haven't really you know looked at the issue. I mean, most times understanding uh, the dynamics and what's really going on. Why is the government, you know, not agreeing to the agreement that they had in 2019? If you follow, if you look through, I mean, some of the content or the issues that ASU is asking for, revitalization of universities, moving across. I mean, I, I graduated from a university. And if you look at the structure of this university, there's really nothing to write home about. This lecturers, some of them who are professors are still earning 500,000 naira as a professor 20 years ago, over 30 years ago. And some of them who are also professors right now, or senior lecturers, don't end up to 350,000 naira. Are the concerns of ASU not, you know, legitimate? Why is the federal government not shifting grounds in this conflict situation? I would have been surprised that we'll, we'll finish this uh, review without you coming up with the issue of ASU. I know how, pa how passionate you are with uh, the issue of education and especially as a concise ASU and uh, the lecturer. So I'm not surprised you're coming up with it. We come here every week and we discuss it. We discussed it last week and I gave my view um, uh, on it. And I said that it's high time that after to meet the federal government at midway so that we can open up the, the universities. We might have we might have disagreement, but in arbitration, as I've always said, it's a give and take. You cannot have, remain and stand at the point and say that you can't do anything about it. My concern is not even about lecturers now, but the students that are staying at all. Um, this, last week, or uh, this week, early this week, UNICEF came out with a report that out of schools to, to 10 in Nigeria has risen from about 13 percent to about 18 million. Now it is 50 million. And that is just secondary school to them. And I was asking, I hope that they also put into context and add the university students that are out of school now, because they also are out of school. In the past seven months or there, about university students have not, those in the federal and state university have not been to school. Um, but if this thing lingers, then what is happening now is what is going to happen, because we're now start seeing great waste. The state universities are trying now to start um, remove themselves from the ASU strike. Eleven of the state universities um, have decided to pull out of that strike. And uh, I want my university, the one I attended for my first degree, Lagos State University, yesterday matriculated their students. That means that <laughs> they're out of they out of the strike. That means they are moving on. So I think this is the best time for ASU to be able to come on. Yes, an agreement was signed. I will continue to say that well, a government well, that Chris, continues to Chris, sign we're ending this conversation the union, now. My point here is. It, Chris, I mean, I, I, it should also shift grounds or the government should shift grounds because it's a conflict situation yes. and you have both parties not willing to compromise. But if you look at, you know, both no, parties, who should be shifting grounds? Uh, if, if, you, if, you, if you move Messy. across the entire, you know, universities in the country, and you look at the infrastructure, there's really nothing to write home about. How many times, Chris, have you heard that people are coming from other parts of the world to, you know, to be part of the Nigerian education? We're talking about infrastructure now. We're not even talking about... I mean, if you look at the welfare, some lecturers have passed on because so far they haven't even earned anything from February and some of them are dependent on this salary to take care of their medical bills and other people are already changing profession. 
what becomes of our education system, really? Who is winning in all of this? Is, is it supposed to be politicized? Because that's what it looks like now. Messi, I'm a charter mediator and also a charter arbitrator uh, of the United Kingdom. And I tell you that in arbitration, it, you, it, it's give and take. You don't remain on stand. That means that you're not going to arbitration. What we're having is an issue. I'll say the time with that number that the government is, will, will be well ported for refusing to abide by the agreement signed with us. I read the fact. You don't sign an agreement and go back on it. But the fact remains that there is no way 100% of these issues at stake will be resolved. So, as to I expect as to have given the government certain priorities, if you meet certain de this certain demand, it might not be 100%. We we'll call off the strike and give you another ultimatum. If you give another ultimatum of our six months to be able to meet that, if you don't meet that, my primary response on sign, not only ASU, but I'm talking about the student. We are talking about ASU, ASU, ASU. There are students that hire home that stayed out of campus. And for the past one year, their they rent has expired and they're going to pay again. That is All right. part of it. So All right. what are we Chris talking K, about? Chris, we, so, we have so to go. <laughs> I know you're passionate about this, but because of time, uh, we have to go. We've thoroughly enjoyed your, your analysis this morning, and we look forward to having you uh, same time next week. Ranka Dede. Ranka Dede, wow. yes, wow. indeed. Wow. I was about wow. to say that. <laughs> <laughs> indeed. Um, uh, that was a uh, Chris has been Chris Kende, Kende Mahamadu uh, Wandu. Uh, <laughs> Wandu. Hey, that's a good oh, one. Should I choose a different one? <laughs> you can add Buhari. <laughs> I choose a different one. All right, Chris, <laughs> see you next week. Headings, so don't forget the headings. Our yes. nomination for headings for yes, next yes. year. Ab absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Thanks a lot and uh, have a fantastic day. We'll take a break now. When we return, we have our first major conversation of of course, uh, let's check out what happened today in history. We'll be right back.